Today on the AI Breakdown, we're looking at one of the hottest projects on GitHub right now that in many ways shows the future of AI-powered personal computing. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday on Twitter, Alvaro Sintas wrote, Open Interpreter is going viral. Imagine running in your computer a free open source implementation of Code Interpreter. It's like having a conversation with your machine, understanding you perfectly. You can tell it to open the internet browser to perform a task, create and edit photos, videos, and PDFs, plot and analyze large data sets, pretty much anything you can think of. For every coder, researcher, and curious person out there, this is a game changer. So what we are talking about is Open Interpreter. And as the founder Killian put it, it's an open source code interpreter that runs locally. It works within the terminal on your computer and has a ChatGPT style interface that can interact with your documents and generally lets you talk to your computer in natural language and actually have it do the things that you want it to do. Now, there are obviously a couple different trends that this intersects with. First of all, it's hard to deny that Code Interpreter is the most significant update to ChatGPT since the launch of GPT-4. In fact, as you've heard on this show and many other places, to many developers, ChatGPT with the integration of Code Interpreter effectively functions like a GPT-4.5, giving ChatGPT the ability to write code to solve problems for itself fundamentally expands the set of things that it can do. On the r slash ChatGPT subreddit, a user posted, Code Interpreter is incredibly overpowered. I just got access to Code Interpreter, and let me tell you, it is incredibly OP. I've been playing around analyzing some data sets, and it is insane. With Code Interpreter, everyone is a data scientist. Until you reach usage cap just like I did. As an aside, my favorite comment came from Cyrus, who wrote, People ain't gonna like this here. You're supposed to complain about how dumb GPT is now. So, okay, one of the trends, and it's right there in the name, is Code Interpreter. Another big trend that this intersects is AI agents. The idea behind AI agents is to give artificial intelligence platforms the ability to do more things. In other words, not just to give you answers to questions, but to actually create software or build applications or do data analysis or generally do things. We've talked extensively on this show about how excited people got about AutoGPT and all the projects like it, and why despite the fact that there was a bit of a cooling off period in terms of the hype cycle around AI agents, autonomous agents remain one of the biggest focuses for developers in the entire AI and startup space. Now, a third trend that this interacts with is privacy and AI that runs locally. One of the big concerns around tools like ChatGPT and really any conversational AI platform is that the more customized to you they are or your company, to your information, to your data, the better they're going to perform. But of course, if they are owned and operated by a third party, giving them all that access to data and information is a security risk. It's a privacy risk. From reporting around Apple, this has been one of the hangups that has led them to not exactly be clear on their AI strategy in the first place. From an information report last week about how Apple is now spending millions of dollars a day to develop AI, to train its AI, quote, questions linger over how Apple can incorporate LLMs in its products. The company's leaders prefer running software on devices, which improves privacy and performance, as opposed to on cloud servers. But that could be difficult to achieve. Ajax GPT, which is Apple's LLM, has been trained on more than 200 billion parameters. An LLM with more than 200 billion parameters couldn't reasonably fit on an iPhone. Okay, so bringing it back to Open Interpreter, you've got the trends of Code Interpreter itself, the trend of AI agents, and the trend of private, locally running software. The way that Open Interpreter describes itself is this. Open Interpreter lets LLMs run code, Python, JavaScript, Shell, and more locally. You can chat with Open Interpreter through a ChatGPT-like interface in your terminal by running Interpreter after installing. This provides a natural language interface to your computer's general purpose capabilities. Create and edit photos, videos, PDFs, etc. Control a Chrome browser to perform research plot clean and analyze large data sets, etc. Now, almost immediately this took off. Two days after launching, founder Killian wrote, with 10K stars, 5K in line for the desktop app, and 500 strong in the Discord, Open Interpreter is the number one GitHub repo in the world. Killian also pointed out some of the project's next steps, which include integrating other open source models and improving the setup documentation. The question, of course, is whether this is just a novelty and something that people are excited about in terms of what it might be in the future, or whether people are actually finding value now. So let's look at five use cases of people who, in these very early days, have actually figured out how to do something with Open Interpreter that is contributing to this big hype cycle. Let's start with something fairly basic. Josh Wardini writes, Open Source Interpreter by Hello Killian is wild. Wanted data analysis with ChatGPT on a table from my database, but was 1.5 gigs. ChatGPT only allows 512 megabytes. Dragged file into console, asked Interpreter to remove 70% of rows. It wrote the pandas code and saved file on my system file size reduced in 20 seconds, uploaded and started asking questions via ChatGPT. 
You can see in the images that Josh shared, the file is too large maximum file size warning from ChatGPT, and then the Python code that Open Interpreter wrote and asked Josh to confirm that he would like it to run. Another use case, this one shared by Killian himself, was setting up most Hugging Face models for offline use with a single command. Hugging Face is, of course, the home of thousands and thousands of open source models, and so simplifying usage is something that obviously has a lot of application for many developers in this space. Sangmin.eth used Open Interpreter to download, cut, translate, and subtitle a clip from YouTube of an interview with Sam Altman. The steps it took were to download the YouTube URL, cut the clip in a specific area from 3447 to 3617, transcribe the clip into English, then translate that English into Japanese, convert the subtitles, and then burn them to the video. Pietro Shirano, the AI lead at Brex, used Code Interpreter to turn an image into a PNG, create a website to display that PNG, and then open that website in Chrome. And then there was Twitter user at Ishwa who wrote, Today I asked Open Interpreter to make me an audiobook from a website. The command line was, take this website and make an audiobook out of it, deeplearningbook.org. Open Interpreter responds, to accomplish this task, we will follow these steps. One, scrape the website to extract the text content. Two, clean the extracted text to remove any unwanted elements such as HTML tags, JavaScript code, etc. Three, convert the clean text into speech. Four, save the speech as an audio file. And just to give you a sense of how it actually works, this is a really instructive example. Open Interpreter continues, let's start with the first step, which is to scrape the website. We will use Python's beautiful soup library for this. If it's not installed, we will install it using pip. We will also use the request library to send HTTP requests. Let's check if these libraries are installed. If not, we will install them. So what you're seeing here is that Open Interpreter understands what tools it needs to accomplish the task and takes as a first step, making sure that those tools are available to it. So for example, the beautiful soup package was not installed on the machine, and so its first step was to install it. Now, this is pretty amazing for the first few days of this tool being available. But of course, there are still challenges. One, as pointed out by commenters on Product Hunt, is that the fact that this runs through Terminal means that its value is limited to a technologically enfranchised set. Vikram Aditya writes, This looks very interesting for Terminal native users. However, I would strongly recommend focusing on a GUI for distribution. People who are comfortable with Terminal are also people who are capable of getting the outputs one way or the other, even if this tool didn't exist. Killian Lucas responded, Hey Vikram, 100% agreed. This project is all about converting natural language to machine code with a strong focus on non-programmers, so I'm totally aligned with your vision. It shouldn't require a terminal, a Python installation, anything. It should be an app. Happy to report that a desktop app with ChatGPT-like GUI is in development. Still, even with the valid concerns about interface, overall, there is a lot going on to be very excited about here. McKay Wrigley tweeted and said, Tools like these give us a peek of what AI-powered personal computing will look like. And I think that's a really good way to describe it. In many ways, Open Interpreter and the things like it represent a fundamentally new and different way to control your computer. Instead of clicking around and going where you need to go to do something, you can talk to the computer in natural language and have it do those things for you. Now, it's quite clear that Open Interpreter won't be the only implementation of this. In fact, in many ways, the chatbot assistants that live directly inside different operating systems are likely going to be the way that most people first experience this type of new interface. Still, for even slightly more sophisticated users, there is a lot to like in a different open implementation versus one that's going to be tightly controlled by Microsoft or whoever else. Miguel Lucas sums it up. Every time I try Open Interpreter, it's like having a fluent conversation with my computer. No more complex commands. Speak naturally and it understands. So that, my friends, is Open Interpreter, a very cool new project and one that I am keeping a close eye on. Again, this came out just a week ago, so still has a lot of growing left to do. But if you are interested in the project, go check it out at openinterpreter.com. That's going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.